Some tips for urban sketching. This is a photo I have taken from Tiong Baru in Singapore. I hope you enjoy it. My process always starts with a simple outline, either pencil or pen. Here's some of the tips. Uh, I use hot press to create sharp edges. I use soft diffuse lines. Um, try to use as many negative shapes as possible. Charge interesting colors into the washes. And three-dimensional feel comes from shadows. Um, shadows should have many colors, oblique lines for dynamism, stacking shape for 3D, and shadows on figures as well. Use lots of water and finally, have lots of fun. I know that's a lot of tips, but don't worry, I'm gonna break it down for you. Okay, right, so first one, uh, as you can see, uh, the tip here is to use soft diffuse background. And I throw in a good measure of uh, water uh, and different colors. Uh, well, the sort of in the same family, right? So in this case, it's yellow, a bit of brown, uh, squiggly lines uh, to sort of show that it's in the background. I, there's really no design. Well, it's kind of like just having fun playing with it. Right. Uh, charge interesting interesting colors into the washes. Um, a bit of uh, darker blues, uh, maybe purple. I can't quite remember what colors I use, but basically, it's, I'm thinking in terms of values. Right. Uh, now, as I uh, put in the green colors here, uh, the uh, the sunshade, uh, I'm, I make sure that I use a bit of a negative shapes uh, to go around the wording. So try to use as many negative shapes uh, or try to use it as much as possible because it really gives you uh, a good aesthetic and it, it's very nice actually to, to consider uh, designing watercolor with you know negative shapes inside and around it and uh, that gives you a lot of uh, fun thing to do but the eyes really enjoy looking at it as well. Uh, in this case it's not quite a big shape it's just really around the brand and you know around uh, the logo of uh, the, the bread um, uh, the bread shop bakery basically it's quite a popular bakery in Tiong Bahru in Singapore uh, Tiong Bahru is uh, it's a, one of the oldest estate uh, housing estate in Singapore in recent years it's gone really hip uh, up market and uh, lots of uh, very interesting little stores has popped up and um, it's gone well the gentrification of Tiong Bahru continues uh, now we're going to put in shadows. So uh, the tip here is that, you know, don't just use a single color. Think in value. Uh, use different colors that of a uh, sort of similar value. Uh, try to stay transparent as well so that it is not opaque black, uh, but really more transparent black. Uh, I try to think warm and cool, uh, putting in some warm colors and some dark colors, but basically try to stay uh, in the same value scheme as much as possible. This really is to make the figures in front pop. Um, as you can see, the three-dimensional comes from the fact that the shadows is pushing the figures out in front. Uh, the next tip really is the sort of oblique lines. Oblique lines has um, a lot of energy to it, so try to incorporate oblique lines. Uh, you know, you're not doing an architectural drawing, so uh, line doesn't have to be perpendicular to the edges of the paper, you know, either 90 degree or straight, uh, you know, in, in, in essence, try to use oblique lines. Um, don't be afraid to draw more lines uh, in the middle of your painting as well, because uh, sometimes you just draw broad shape and in the middle of it, you realize you need more lines to guide your painting. Just go back with your pencil and draw more lines. It's not a problem at all. So here, uh, I'm trying to give a bit of details of um, the sun shade. Um, and as you know, Singapore is really hot, and the sun is really bright, and uh, many shops have, uh, you know, very, uh, in this case, I think it's a uh, retractable sort of uh, sunshade, but some details just to make sure that people who know Tiong Bahru knows it's uh, from the Tiong Bahru Bakery, which is, of course, quite a famous and popular shop. As you can see, there's a queue. Um, and people are wearing masks, so it's still in the COVID-19 circuit breaker phase two so um, anyway uh, again three-dimensional 
feel comes from shadows. Um, you know, I'm, I'm quite careful in uh, putting in a bit of a, a, a shadow, and as the shadow comes down from the top, it diffuses somewhat. And um, because the darkest shadow part is actually uh, where it's nearer the sun's shade, and uh, where it's closer to the bot, uh, you know, the bottom part of uh, the shade. Uh, the shadow has somewhat diffused away. Um, so now I'm putting a bit of a detail. Um, and as you can see, the, uh, the sketch is coming more or less to life. Uh, the figures, the three figures are coming out. Uh, I try to stay close to the colors that I see. Uh, blue shirt uh, and dark pants uh, and uh, so on and so forth. Don't forget to put shadows on the figure. So um, watch the the figure and then uh, continue to put uh, shadows to it. Uh, to create a three-dimensional sense of the figure. Um, as you can see, I continue to, to you know, just chip away um, and uh, try to stay close to the value as much as, as, as I can, uh, basically. Remember to think in value, not so much in colors, but think in value. Um, and uh, well, there's a oh, fair amount of uh, liberty as well, but uh, in in the way I'm putting in uh, the colors, um, I try to, you know, move, uh, connect different shapes. Shapes are cut up uh, by shape. So in, in in this case, as you can see, the figures is cutting up uh, the background shape. But in order to unify the shapes at the back, you try to use the same colors with the same value, and you go right through it so that there's a bit of a stacking, if you like. It creates a three-dimensional. Uh, sense of the sketch and this, this this little trick is what most sketches use to create a sense of depth uh, in a two-dimensional piece of uh, paper right all right I think we are almost done and I'm kind of mangled the skin tone uh, <laughs> I uh, use the wrong uh, values and I have to kind of redo it uh, at the end I think I did uh, lift off more colors and then you know I go back at it uh, the skin tone colors are a bit tough. Uh, maybe for another tutorial, not today. It's it's quite a complicated thing to do, and I'm still not quite where I need to be in terms of my skill set. I kind of know the theory, but uh, to do it, um, well, it takes practice as well. So um, here we go. I think we're almost there. Just wrapping up the uh, the figures, uh, lifting off some colors, and redoing some of the shapes. But other than that, I think you know it's. Uh, Pretty happy with uh, with uh, with how this has turned out. Um, many mistakes as well, but hey, anyway, it's a sketch, not a <laughs> not a you know fine art painting. I'm happy with it. I hope uh, you try something like this similar to where you live, um, and use some of my tips. Let me know how it goes. Uh, and if you like some of these sort of uh, videos that I make, uh, I hope you support me. There's um, uh, you know, at least it helps me a lot in getting feedback. Uh, if you subscribe and like this video, uh, have a good day wherever you are. Peace.